Well, this is all, this is the 100th anniversary of the end of the World War I. I'm basically wearing a, a pre-World War I uniform that would be a summer uniform that they would have went overseas with. Uh, and, okay, uh, it's not wool. And, hey, Mike, come here for a minute. This is actually a war, this is... Thank you very you're much, You're welcome, Ken. you're welcome. Wonderful job. Thank you. This is actually a World War I uniform. He's wearing a helmet. It's got, it's wool. They wore, they wore the putees, which you probably can't see in here, uh, which are these things, the wraps for your, for your feet. Uh, steel helmet, this is an original one. Because you, it's, it's designed after the British. That's from World War I. World War I helmet. Do you know where that came from? It's actually, the design came from the British during World War One. A lot of... How did you obtain it? How did... Uh, I, I can't really tell you. It's, it's been years ago when I was younger, I collected it. This gas mask is the protective gas mask for the, for the uh, poisonous gas. This is actually designed from the British, again, British gas mask. When they went into war, they used a gas mask, which was not very, you know, they would have to wet it. And actually, they, this was gave them some protection from the gas. This is this was a French gas mask. A lot of equipment was used from the French. Typical canteen, very similar to the World War II version. This this is a 1917 trench knife, original. And as you can see, the, the it's pretty devastating weapon. Very hard to stitch up. American? That's an American trench knife, yes. They also wore, they also had the bolo knife, which is like this. These would be fighting knives. This strange looking bag is actually a grenade pouch. They would actually carry this, and this is a typical grenade, the later model grenade that they used during World War One. This unusual looking thing is a flashlight, and this could be worn. You can wear it, uh, or, they call, or they call it a torch light. And this is a 1917 bayonet, which goes with the rifles that are in the, in the background. American, but basically these rifles, the 1917 rifle, which is in that stack, was actually, they were being made for the British at the time, so we couldn't produce enough 1903 rifles at the time, so they, they a lot of American troops were used these. Did a lot of trench warfare, and of course, you really couldn't look out of the trench, so here's a, a periscope. If this was the top of the trench here, you have to talk loud because the mic is on so, me. If this was the top of the trench, you don't want to stick your head up. So you take off. See, now I, I can see you now. That's how they did it. And this equipment, this is the 1910 shovel or entrenching tool. A lot of soldiers in the beginning of the war, were either they were either given to pick the mattock pickaxe here where they were given this towards during the war after a while they they all issued the uh the shovel and entrenching tool this here is a bread tin it's like hard bread or hard tack what they they used during the civil war and they were actually in a paper co uh container and being that with the gas and the moisture, they they were they were soldered into these metal containers, which they had to open up. This still has the original contents in it. They would carry three of those in their pack. Here's your mess kit, and basically it would be made out of aluminum, with your knife 
spoon and forks would come in there. And your baking can. Basically, this was for meat, so it didn't leach into your equipment. So they, this, this is from that period. And a condiment can. Salt, sugar, and coffee would be in this. Have all different little compartments. All this would fit into a haversack, which, could you bring the haversack over here? Bring the late war one. Everything that's on this table would fit into a haversack. No, they wouldn't be carrying everything. This is a lot of different items. Not everything would be. Your tent would be in here, You'd, your shelter tent, your blanket, your uh, poncho, and your mess gear, and some of your clothing, like your underwear and all that would, would fit in this. This is your mess can pouch would be there. And that's why you saw those leather sheaths. They actually get put into that. Extra pair of socks, and here's your period. These are actually original long johns from that period. I showed them that already. And these are sweaters from home. The American Red Cross, even at that time, would make, make up this an original sweater or scarf or gloves that would be made. And you carry that for the winter. And pretty much that's it. I mean, so this, part, this is part of your collection. This is my collection. Okay, and do you uh, is this something you do just on the side? Or what? I do this. I do this because I I did. I, I've been a reenactor for years, and I started out with Civil War reenacting, and I was a collector. So I I started collecting some items. So I I do a little. We do living histories with the. Uh, World War One, Spanish American War, and Civil War. And, I, and is this on display somewhere in particular, or is this more of a traveling exhibit? This is basically my own collection, and I display it at certain events, like, you know. How long have you been, uh, did it take you to collect all these items? Over over Probably about years? 20 or 30 years, yeah. So little by little over 20 or 30 years? Yeah, plus some of the items I inherited from uh, my, my uncle and my father, so. Yeah, actually, I inherited this from my uncle. This this is 1917. So he used that in World War One. Uh, no, I inherited these. These weren't used. He probably bought these years ago, back in the, in, in the uh, in the 50s. Okay. And what kind of uh, what kind of uh, weapon is that? Well, this one's a 1903. They couldn't make enough of these to supply the troops, so this is a 19. 1903 Springfield, and basically um, this would be the, the main state weapon in the beginning, but they couldn't make enough. We were making rifles for uh, Britain at the time, and this is basically the, a typical, it looks very much like the P-14, which is a British rifle, but we adopted it using our the same ammo, the 306 ammo. Right, I was reading newspapers from the time, and there they, they weren't enough weapons, so the soldiers were training with two by fours. Yeah, and they also had used crag rifles from that period. Now, the African American troops, it was segregated at that time, basically fought with the French, and they typically would have been using these Verdier rifles, which this is a French rifle from World War One. This would be what they would have used. They probably would have wore the basic uniform with, but with a with a, a French helmet. Now this rifle, this particular rifle, is in 1898. This would have been a captured German rifle. This is the German Mauser 1898 rifle. You can you can always see with these really high, kind of slope sight. But this this would have been the German weapon at the time. And that's just another uh, 1917. And uh, again, that's an original shelter tent. 